Hey there guys! Now matter can exist in three different states, namely solids, liquids and gases. In the last lesson we learned how the kinetic theory explains how these states of matter can change from one to another. We will now learn more about the behavior of the atoms while they are still in these states. We will talk about solids in this lesson, while liquids and gases will be discussed in the next lesson. But as we discuss them, always remember they can all be converted into one another. First solids. There are different kinds of solids. Some are hard, some are soft, some are shiny, some are dull, some are smooth, some are rough. There are different kinds, but as scientists, we will classify them by the arrangement of their atoms and see how this gives them different properties. There are two kinds of solids, crystalline solids and non-crystalline or amorphous solids. These two kinds of solids can only be differentiated by the arrangement of their atoms, not the way they look or feel. To understand this, check this out. Talc powder, the one babies use in their diapers and people sometimes apply to their faces, is a crystalline solid. Now flour, the one you use for cooking, is however amorphous. But they both look and feel similar, don't they? Likewise, the body of a new car and its glass window. They may feel similar when you touch them, but the glass is amorphous, while the steel, which is used for the car's body, has a crystalline structure. To understand the difference between crystalline and amorphous solids, let's start by understanding the true properties of crystals. Now, like all solids, the atoms or molecules of crystals are held together by strong cohesive forces that keep them together in a solid state. But in crystals, these forces are pretty strong. These atoms are held so strong that no matter how the atoms jiggle, they can't move very far. This means the position of the atoms is very fixed, and because the forces are equal across all the atoms, they hold all the atoms at equal distances from each other, giving atoms this kind of structure. These are the two important things you need to know about crystals. One is that the atoms are held together by strong forces, and that the atoms are arranged in a defined structure. It is important to understand that these defined structures are not all the same. The forces that hold crystals together are different in strength. They could be electrovalent forces, metallic bonds, covalent forces, or even van der Waals forces. You learned about these forces in previous lessons. Now, if a crystal is made up of molecules, they may have more than one of these forces holding the atoms together from different sides, and this leads to different shapes. The shapes of crystals made up of only atoms are very regular. Metals and simple salts often have this type of crystal structure. The simpler the chemical formula of a substance is, the more likely it is to have a simple regular crystal. Let's get to amorphous solids. The main properties of amorphous substances are just the opposite of those of crystalline substances. The atoms are held together by weak forces and arranged in undefined irregular patterns. Most substances that are amorphous at normal temperatures are made up of molecules. The force of attraction between them are weak. The molecules can easily escape them and shift or move and therefore give them an irregular structure. Like I've said, it is not possible to tell whether a substance is crystalline or amorphous by just the way they look or feel. But when you heat crystalline and amorphous substances, they behave very differently. They also behave very differently when you pass electricity through them. These differences reflect in their chemical properties. In future lessons, we will carefully discuss what happens to amorphous and crystalline substances when heat and electricity is passed through them, and how the arrangement of their atoms and molecules affects the way they react with other materials. Meanwhile, remember that one, Crystals are made up of atoms or molecules that are held together by strong forces and arranged in a defined structure. Two, amorphous substances are made up of molecules held together by weak cohesive forces and have no defined arrangements. Also remember that these arrangements affect their physical and chemical properties. These are all very important lessons, so we'll see in the next lesson where we'll talk about liquids. Bye.